here we go. Give it a few minutes and then we will get started. Just tuning in. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, let us know uh, where you're watching from. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section. We'll get started in just a few moments. Um, for those of you just now watching. Um, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know where you're watching from today. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we'll get started here in just a few moments. Let some more folks join the stream. Uh, but while you're waiting, let us know where you're watching from, right in the comments down below where you are watching from today. Get started here real soon. Perry is watching from Urbana. Thanks for tuning in, Perry, our good friend Perry out there. Give it about one more minute and then we'll get started. Uh, where you're watching from, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Hey, Janet. Hey, Barb. What is going on? We'll get started here in just a few minutes. We'll wait for folks to come on in, but thanks to you. Uh, for watching tonight. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, put a comment in the comment section. Hey, Katie. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Is one of, from, uh, is, North Champaign, my apartment is, in North Champaign. I think, I think, Savannah, you may have another video playing. Barb's watching from downtown Champaign. Uh, John's watching museum. From Sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. Um, okay, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, if you haven't done so already, let us know where you're watching from. Um, but welcome uh, to another edition of Mornings with the Museum. Uh, my name is Pat Kane, and uh, I am joined by some lovely special guests, some fantastic friends um, from the Champaign County Museums Network. And we're going to learn a little bit more about these folks and the institutions that they work for. Um, so let's learn who is with us today. So if we could, uh, let's just go around and give a quick introduction of ourselves uh, to everybody out there watching. Um, and then we'll get into the program. So I'll start. Uh, my name is Pat Kane. Again, I work at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, uh, also part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District, where I am the Public Programs and Visitor Services Coordinator. Uh, Savannah, would you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Savannah Donovan, and I am working at the Anita Purvis Nature Center, which is part of the Urbana Park District. I'm the Environmental Public Program Coordinator, and I'm joined today by Quasi. I'm sorry, this is Ginger. <laughs> Misspoke. This is Ginger here. Uh, Ginger is an eastern screech owl. Ginger, easily the coolest living thing on the stream right now. Um, <laughs> uh, nothing against Savannah, Scott, and Julia. You are all wonderful. 
wonderful people, but how do we beat an owl? Um, I, I don't know. Um, Scott, what about you? Would you want to introduce yourself? Sure thing, Pat. Um, my name is Scott Schwartz. I am the director of the university's Sousa Archives and Center for American Music. And my official title is Archivist for Music and Fine Arts. And, um, I love the fact that the owl can turn its head almost completely around. Wow, yeah, that hey. is so cool. <laughs> hey, thanks, Scott. Um, and Julia, how about you? Yeah, I'm Julia Nucci Kelly, and I am from Crandard Art Museum. Um, I'm the assistant director for marketing and communications. So I basically consider myself kind of storyteller in chief for the museum. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Savannah, Ginger, Scott, and Julia uh, for being uh, on today. Really appreciate it. Uh, but uh, today's program uh, theme is Fantastic Friends. Uh, we'll learn more about these fantastic friends in a few moments, but I did want to let you know about a few things uh, before we get there. Uh, first and foremost, again, if you haven't done so already, let us know where you're watching from by putting a comment in the comment section. Uh, uh, Dave Leek says, great to see four happy familiar faces, exclamation point. Um, always good to hear from Dave. Uh, as yes. Well. Um, but uh, this is a this is a live uh, this is designed to be a live Q and A session. So we would love 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 if you ask us your questions. Send in your questions in the comment section. Um, you know all questions, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Any and all questions. Questions about you know our institutions, maybe topics you're interested in, you'd love to get our thoughts on, maybe even the meaning of life. Whatever uh, you know, ask us a question. Make this more engaging for you, uh, us, and everybody else watching. Um, a few other things. Um, so although the museum is closed, uh, Champaign County Forest Preserve District areas are open for you to explore. So again, we encourage you to get out and explore if you have the opportunity at the Champaign County Forest Preserve District while maintaining a safe social distance. And we strongly re recommend that um, you're wearing a mask when you're out there. Uh, a few other programs I didn't wanna let you know about that the Museum of the Grand Prairie has coming up uh, tomorrow at four o'clock. Um, we will have um, a premiere on the Museum of the Grand Prairie Facebook page, um, Art in a Time of Quarantine, a virtual art showcase uh, that Julia um, actually helped yep. with as well too um, here uh, on the program today. And uh, we got a whole bunch of really great submissions from local K through 12 artists. And this awesome virtual art showcase uh, was put together by some great people, including my colleague, Katie Snyder here at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, um, shambanamoms.com, uh, Julia from Cranard Art Museum, uh, Coop Adventure Play and the City of Urbana Arts and Culture Program. But check out that video as it premieres. Check out some awesome art that was created by local young artists responding uh, to this time of quarantine. Also, um, we're putting up, even though our museum uh, summer camps are canceled in the in-person variety, we're putting out Museum Mondays and some of our virtual summer camp videos out on our Facebook page and YouTube channel uh, all summer long. So stay tuned. Uh, to get some summer camp activity videos and Museum Monday videos uh, from the Museum of the Grand Prairie. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this program is part of Mornings with the Museum. Uh, this is a weekly program we started a couple months, months ago where we have a particular theme that we discuss as well as answer your questions live. And if you have any uh, suggestions for topics uh, to address in future Mornings with the Museum programs, feel free to write that in. Leave it in the comments here, send it in via Facebook message, uh, you can also find my email at our website, museumofthegrandprairie.org, where you can send in um, your ideas and what you'd love for us to discuss on future Mornings with the Museum programs. Okay, um, so before we get into our questions, I did want to encourage you to share the screen so you can watch alongside uh, your Facebook friends. Also, we encourage you to ask questions, again, in the comment section for those of you who are just tuning in. We'll do our best to answer them. Maybe we'll even ask you some questions to respond to down below in the comments. So again, help us make this program more fun, more interactive by asking us quint, uh, questions, answering um, some of our questions in the comments uh, so we can have as much fun as possible um, today. Okay, so again, the theme for this week is Fantastic Friends. And I wanted to introduce you to some fantastic friends um, from the Champaign County Museums Network. Um, uh, the Champaign County Museums Network, um, for those of you who don't know about it, I did want to share a little bit about that before um, we hear from them. Um, but uh, the Champaign County Museums Network, 
is, bear with me here. Um, I'm pulling up the website for the museums network here. So it, it is a collection of um, a group of 11 uh, institutional members within Champaign County, where we want to excite, engage, and empower visitors that visit all of our institutions. Um, and there's, you know, it's a collection of nature centers, archives, uh, the local planetarium, pollinitarium, um, and we even have um, some online museums, distributed museums, uh, that are a part of the Champaign County Museums Network. And we come together uh, to work on a number of things. Uh, we meet monthly uh, to talk about, you know, local, um, you know, museum related practices and, and issues. We collaborate on special events uh, each year uh, for uh, the past quite a few years. Uh, we've collaborated to put on some hands-on engaging activities at the Sweet Corn Festival. Uh, that Scott uh, has a huge hand in, you know, completely organizing that and with the help of all of our member institutions. Um, but, uh, you know, we just try to help each other, collaborate with other folks in the museum, nature center, archives, uh, planetarium world locally to try and, you know, uh, figure out how we can best address our community's needs um, here in Champaign County. So that's the Champaign County Museums Network, if you've never heard of it before. Okay. Enough of me talking, let's hear more from you all. Um, so first question, um, uh, can you tell us each, each of you, can you tell us a little bit um, about your institution and maybe go into a little bit more detail uh, about what you do yourself at your place of work? So who would like to go first in answering that question? Savannah, go ahead, Savannah. Um, so here at the Anita Purvis Nature Center, we are exhibiting and interpreting local nature and the environment. Um, so that includes, you know, local wildlife like our uh, owl friend Ginger here. Um, anything that you might be able to, you know, find in your own backyard. So that's a kind of a, our specialty. And um, it's my pleasure to run environmental programs for the Nature Center and the Urbana Park District. Um, of course, everything got put on hold in mid-March, and so we've kind of uh, had to do some rethinking about how to reach our audiences and serve our customers. Um, so we're excited about some things that we're going to have coming up soon. Um, but I'm also really uh, proud that my institution has done a, a, a very good job of trying to protect are um, you know non-essential workers um, and and our customers too so you know we've, we've been laying low for the past month or so but you know we're getting geared up to do some things for this summer yeah <clears throat> one of the things that i really love about outdoor spaces and especially um uh, anita purvis nature center is how accessible you are to everyone um, and so you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, kind of drive to enjoy outdoor spaces. I mean, there's a local community that's right, right close by that um, can enjoy the park, even if the nature center is closed. Yeah. And, um, and I think that kind of the way that you're really nestled right in the community is really pretty amazing aspect of, um, of that. It's not like it's, miles and miles away. Yeah, thank you, Julia. I think we're a nice complement to what the Champaign County Forest Preserve District has to offer. You know, if you are somebody who's living in Champaign-Urbana, you know, here we are right in town, but then, you know, you don't have to go far to find a forest preserve either and, you know, have that a little bit more of a destination feel. So um, yeah, the Park District and the Forest Preserve District work a lot together to, to complement, you know, what we can offer Champaign County. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, Savannah, like you said, you know, we're it, at the forest preserves here in Champaign County, you know, we're just a short escape away. But I think I've heard you say this before, um, uh, that, you know, there's, the, nature is all around you, and you can find out so much about the natural world just by looking in your own backyard, even within the Champaign-Urbana communities, you know, like Julia was saying, uh, there's so many awesome opportunities right within Champaign-Urbana, especially yeah. with Urbana Just Park. last night, sitting in my driveway, I saw a screech owl like this one um, fly down to a, a yard across the street from mine, 
catch something and then fly away again. So, you know, these little uh, eastern screech owls are living all around us, um, not just at Busey Woods, you know, but in your backyard, in your neighborhood, you have these little owls. Yeah, they're all I've around. I've seen Nature's them all walking here. through my community also, um, just actually um, the other day, there was one that was resting. So it was like an early morning and it's the tiniest little thing. So yeah, like, they don't screech though. <laughs> they don't really screech. No. No. So why did they get the name Screech Owl if they I don't, don't screech? I don't know. I, I can do a couple Screech Owl impersonations if you want to hear them. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be great. Yeah. All right, so the first is called the Winnie, and it sounds a little bit like a horse. I haven't done a, an owl impersonation in a while, so forgive me. <clears throat> Woo! It's kind of the Winnie call. The one that I've heard in my neighborhood is what I call the spaceship. And that goes like this. I feel oh, like I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what it was. If, if you did that in your interview, like to get a job <laughs> at the nature center must have bird call experience. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work at Home Lake Forest Preserve, and it was about a 20 minute drive to work every day. And I would practice my owl calls in the car on the way to and from work. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. It's a hidden talent. It's really cool. Yeah. Much better than I could do, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Julia and Scott, you want to uh, tell us a little bit about your institutions? When do you want to go next? Julia, you go on. Okay, um, so Cranard Art Museum is the fine art museum at the University of Illinois. And um, we've been around since 1961. And um, even though we're closed right now because of COVID-19, um, we are doing our best to kind of continue to engage people through art. Um, I think it's a challenge um, being closed and um and gosh i miss the museum <laughs> so um so it's good to to sort of feel like we can continue some things that we have going through the museum we have a a virtual yoga group um that is an extension of people who used to come for free yoga every friday um and i think if there's ever been a time for wellness and um kind of being centered, um, it's now. Um, but actually, um, we're also starting, I think, a really concerted effort to respond to the current moment, um, and really thinking about um, racial justice issues and uh, systemic racism um, in a real way through art. Um, our, our team, um, regularly engages the public. I know, Pat, you're involved with, with outreach for Museum of the Grand Prairie and our educators are involved in that work every day through the public schools um, in Champaign County. Um, and we're kind of extending those programs. Um, this week we announced an exhibition that'll hap happen. I think it'll open in August called Homemade with Love, More Living Room. And, um, that will be curated by Blair Ebony Smith. Um, and she works with um, middle school girls at Franklin and Urbana Middle School um, through programs that empower them through art. So they can express themselves through poetry or dance or drama or visual art. And so we'll be bringing that work together in a special way and then um, continuing to host those girls actually for the coming year. It's pretty amazing. And then we've been involved in art in the time of quarantine. Um, yeah. and, and that has been such a, a great team um, project. Um, I think um, art education teachers in the local schools and also art educators at the different museums kind of came together, had a meeting of the minds and said, you know, we're seeing that kids are processing the current moment through what they're creating. And so we put out a call for art 
and we really had submissions from all over the county. It was, it's incredible. So I'm very excited for the premiere that's going to happen tomorrow at four. Yeah, I've, I've seen that video. And, you know, like you said, Julia, you know, there's so many good submissions and there's so many good young artists that contributed to that. And yeah. It was really, really awesome to see. It's nice to be able to shine a light on, on that work. And, you know, I think I've kind of said it before, and I know Rachel Storm from uh, Urbana Public Arts um, has said this, that, you know, there's something about um, humans that is naturally creative. And kids are so in touch with that. Um, you know, they kind of, that's a pastime. They're always creating something. They're always making something. And so it's been, it's been very exciting to see what they share that they're proud of. Yeah. It's another way of expressing yourself, communicating how you feel for sure. Yeah. Uh, so if this is fantastic friends, you know, we're just grateful for all those friends that shared, share their art with us. That's right. Those young, fantastic friends as well. Too. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, Julia, you know, you mentioned about the current moment as well, too. I think it's important, you know, for, um, you know, us cultural institutions, as we've tried to be a resource for our community, you know, for a long time, uh, you know, being a resource for our community, especially during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, you know, it's also, I think, you know, we have to be a, a resource for our community now in the current moment of, you know, um, current issues we're facing with racism and racial injustices, so. Really, really love uh, the things that Cranard Art Museum does. Thank you. Um, right okay, back well, at you. Thank, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, well, thank you, Julia. Scott, what about you? Tell us about uh, your place. All right. The, the, the SZA Archives and Center for American Music is the, um, the Performing Arts Archives and Museum for campus. Um, we, we have the um, largest body of original manuscripts um, by John Philip Sousa, um, which came here in August of 1932. And um, our collections have grown in many different areas. Um, um, electronic music, computer music, um, which began here at the University of Illinois. We document that through the paper records and um, the instruments. We have quite a few. Um, we have many um, different types of music instruments and music collections. We focus a lot on um, local music um, here um, and um, ethnomusicology, um, which is a mouthful for most people who um, try to say it and a, a tough one to spell also but um, a music of other cultures. And when we think of other cultures, we think of everybody outside the boundaries of the United States, but there are many cultures that have emigrated to this country. And we want to be able to capture and um, preserve those very musics as they intersect. So, um, you know, the um, pandemic has um, made it very difficult because a performing arts um, environment requires people to physically perform. And um, that, that's almost impossible to do in large groups. And so we've been working on, on finding ways for people to connect with our, our collections, our um, sound recording technologies. We've been um, um, putting up on Facebook, um, I regret that I, I have to be involved with that. So people have to see me um, and hear me talk about technologies. Um, we have a, a new post coming out this week. One of my graduate um, per trumpet performance majors is going to play um, one of Herbert L. Clark's um, cornets. He's the godfather of modern brass playing. And, um, we're going to um, play for you a performance of one of Clark's tunes um, played by my student, Sam Litt, um, playing one of Clark's um, solos. Um, and it, it gives you an opportunity to hear the instrument played um, expertly. Um, and I think for us, um, our, our work is largely trying to find ways to connect the community with our collections. And um, as you pointed out, the Sweet Corn Festival um, and the One Community Gather programming 
um, has been something we've supported for over 12 years now. To how does the community um, connect with our music? How can we um, begin to address issues of race and identity um, and use the performing arts as a vehicle to allow us to express our points of view? Um, this year's um, performing arts um, Events have largely been canceled because we've had to do that. Um, the Sweet Corn Festival was canceled about three weeks ago, but we've agreed to do a virtual um, performance and we'll continue to do that. Um, I just talked with the um, director of the Marching Illini and his students have agreed to help us do an instrument petting zoo, which was always something we had at the festival. Um, where young children can test drive everything from um, trumpets and flutes, um, tubas, French horns, um, violins, and so forth. Of course, we can't do that right now, so we're going to have the students demonstrate the horns in a fun way to, um, to entice the, um, the fifth and sixth graders who are not quite sure if they want to play an instrument to, you know, hey, this is the cool stuff you can do with this particular instrument. Um, you can make serious sounds or you can make farty sounds that will drive the band director nuts. And if that's your humor, you know, at least you found an instrument to, you know, bring a smile to everybody's face, except for the band director who has to work with you. So, um, for our if point, he's going to be honest, that band director probably made the same sounds for his band director. I uh, yes, um, <laughs> I I as a saxophonist tended to make sounds that were um, annoying as hell um, to my band director, and on a couple occasions um, he would stop the rehearsal and just look at me sternly and tell me to stop. Although he never threw me out of the band because he needed me, but um, it was my way to get his attention. Uh, I have had students do the same to me, so I, I think payback is, you know, well earned now. So that, you know, that's what we've been doing. Like art, I think music can be a really powerful outlet for all kinds of people, but, you know, young people in particular right now. Absolutely. It, yeah, I was just going to uh, say that. I mean, and and you, you can make music with all kinds of things. I always tell, I, my greatest joy is to watch a two-year-old pull out mom's pots and pans and a wooden spoon or two and bang away and start singing. Um, oh, which, Scott, you should see my house. <laughs> yep, yep. We've got improvised instruments galore. Excellent. I mean, I, I, Everything's an instrument, you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, yeah, even, you know, even your voice. And everything's a canvas, too. Yep. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and that's the beauty of it. Um, there, there are no right ways or wrong ways, just fun ways to express yourself um, through music or dance or it, the arts. I mean, you've had music in the parks. Um, and I think those are my favorite kinds of experiences because you bring the fine arts, the performing arts into the, the natural place scape of life. And sometimes if you listen carefully, you can hear the screech owl as someone's playing a flute solo. And I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's really summarizes why our Champaign County Museums Network is uh, such a great group to be a part of because each of our member museums, we really complement one another. You know, some of us are doing similar work, but, you know, even where we are diverse, you know, we come together to find common ground and, and it's all about creating experiences and positive experiences for our customers, our visitors. Yeah, I mean, even as a, you know, I started here a couple of years ago, a young guy in the museum profession, you know, each one of you have helped me out in some way or another, whether it's with a, a research project. I, I came to Sousa once um, to do some research there. Um, you know, Savannah, you helped me out um, when I had some questions about, you know, special request programs. Julia, you've also, I mean, you, all of your marketing expertise, you know, I could just listen to you talk about that, you know, 
some people may not want to, but I feel like yeah. <laughs> you do such a great job with all of that, but, and I, I enjoy it. So I just want to be real clear that, you know, for the social media stuff, um, I, I, I really appreciate all the information you tell this old timer he should consider doing. So quite frankly, we learn as much from you yeah. as you from us. Yeah. yeah you, it, we all help each other out. You know, we're all in the same game together. Um, and that's, you know, as Savannah was talking about, we complement each other so well and, you know, work together on programs and events and don't know what I do without other local museums in the community, you know, so. Um, it's what makes us, I think the, the beauty of our community is the variety of different museums and nature centers and so forth um, that make it a, a, a wonderful place to live. Um, you know, I came from DC, had worked at the Smithsonian for many years, and quite frankly, I, I love our community so much more because everything's accessible and it's fun. And for the most part, doesn't cost a bloody fortune. So quite frankly, it's, it's, it's got everything. Well, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I did want to address a few things in the comment section from the video. But thanks, you know, Savannah, Scott, and Julia for your responses there and telling us all a little bit more about your institutions. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Jeff is watching from Rantoul. Jeff, if you're still tuning in, thanks for watching. Um, uh, Katie, Katie Snyder says, hi, friends. Um, Barb, I, I, uh, Barb was addressing the owl calls, uh, the screech owl. And she and she says that they have an unnerving call. Um, um, uh, Dave Leak, I don't know if she was talking about Savannah. I think she was talking about the Screech Owl in general. <laughs> um, Dave Leak said, "Who knew Savannah was the Rick Little of nature?" <laughs> Who's Rick Little? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't know who Rick Little so, is. So okay, Rich Little used to be he's like kind of an old time impressionist like he could do mm -hmm. anyone's voice that's probably so, it so yeah he was kind of uh, i was thinking more jack hannah savannah being jack hannah who used to go on the tonight show with different animals and uh -huh. uh, we'll expect you to have a cougar in hand well i can have something else maybe next time but yeah, okay. uh, not a cougar. <laughs> um barb said they make you screech talking about the owls owls big hit um one more comment and then one question um, that we got. Uh, Katie said, art in the time of quarantine will become part of the historical record maintained by Museum of the Grand Prairie. What a great way for kids and youth from this time period to share their stories with people. Of Couldn't agree more. Um, one question though, to, to, to wrap up here, we can answer it real quick. Um, if anybody wants to address it, do you each have plans for reopening? Anybody want to address that? I'll start. I'll start with that. Um, so at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, we're part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. We have another uh, facility, the Homer Lake Interpretive Center, which is part of the Champaign County Museum Network. And, and we're, you know, we don't have a set date for reopening, but we are actively discussing what the museum and the Interpretive Center will look like when it reopens, because it's not going to be quite exactly the same. Uh, you know, we have to maintain some new standards. Um, uh, you know, recommendations from the CU Public Health District uh, that we're going to follow, recommendations from the CDC, the state of Illinois, and we're having discussions among staff members as to what that will look like um, as we reopen soon. That's really all I'll say. We don't have a set date for reopening, but we are actively discussing what it will look like. Yeah, and I'll echo, you know, a lot of the same is true for the Anita Purvis Nature Center as part of the Urbana Park District. Um, we have committed to uh, canceling all in-person programs, events, um, facilities closed uh, for, for the time being. Um, we will not have any programs um, at all through July 31st, and then we'll kind of reassess for the month of August um, at least in-person programs. You know, we can do virtual things like this, of course. Um, but yeah, we, we don't have an official opening date for the Nature Center uh, because that's really going to depend on, you know, the phase that we're in at the time. Um, 
so you know we're just waiting for the go ahead from uh, from the governor from the Champaign Urbana Public Health District. And then, as you said, you know, looking at our facility in a new way, how can we continue to serve people and keep them safe? Um, I'll echo the same thing for Korean Nerd Art Museum. I will say, I it's I can say with complete confidence that every cultural institution cannot wait to reopen. Right? Oh yeah, we we're miss so, everybody so we're much. We're so excited to see our visitors um, again and be able to engage with you. But um, I think right now we want to do that in a way that is safe for everyone. So, um, so we're doing things like looking at, you know, how we clean our facilities and, and what kind of signage we'll need to direct visitors through the building, um, kind of what our procedures would be for accepting, you know, how many visitors can we accept? Some, some, some questions like that, that are kind of the fundamental questions, I think that Museum in the Grand Prairie and Native Purvis Nature Center are probably thinking about too. Um, we also have to be um, in phase four of the governor's plan um, before cultural institutions will be allowed to open. So um, there is a lot of work going on in the background. Um, and all of that is being done, I think, with visitors in mind. Um, and so we'll, I think as soon as we do have a concrete date, we're going to let the public know. Um, so you can feel really confident about that. That's a really good, good question. I think um, as part of the university, the goal is in some way to begin to accommodate the faculty and students um, in a more on-campus um, environment. What that will exactly be is still open for discussion with campus and those guidelines will then inform us as well as what the governor has determined is, is appropriate. Um, I, think, I think the two things that are critical for us is um, how do we make our spaces and our collections accessible in a safe way that will ensure a positive experience, um, a, a learning experience? Mm -hmm. It is my hope by August that we can begin, for us um, researchers to begin to use our collections because we are a research repository and, um, and begin to address the issues in terms of how we handle visitors, but having 70 or 80 high school kids come to the center for the day is probably not going to happen in the near term because that's just not practical. But um, I hope it, in the near term, we can find mechanisms that enable us to allow the high schools to engage with our stuff meaningfully in a virtual environment. Um, and so an unanswered question, but um, one that I think we all, as Julia pointed out, we all want our visitors back because that's what makes us what we are. Um, otherwise, we're just storage units and we're just hiding stuff. What's the point? Yeah. This limbo is a challenge for everyone. You know, um, it's a challenge for me as a mother, you know, separately as it's a challenge for me as a professional. Um, you know, my kids cannot wait to go to a playground. <laughs> it's the little things, you know? The little things, yeah. You really miss but the little I, things. I was going to say, I, I, I think that Scott's, um, what Scott raised about research and kind of keeping things accessible is really important. And um, I would just kind of encourage, if you're missing your museum, visit their website and see how you can explore their collections. Um, we just did an update to our collection uh, portion of our website. So that 97% of the art that the museum holds, which is more than 10,000 works of art is now accessible online. Wow. So I know it's not gonna be a, a great substitute for the in-person experience, but when you need the fix, right, then you can, um, you can visit that. I think um, some of the great videos and kids activities that um, Champaign County Museums Network members are putting out right now are really meant to 
help serve those visitors in the meantime, kind of while we all wait. Mm -hmm. So. Yep, doing as only... much as we can virtually. Yeah. And, and, you know, and maybe that great. virtual stuff will stay with us for quite some time yeah. just to give people options so that, you know, you can have an in-person experience, but you can also still still engage in a way that makes you feel most comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, from my point of view, I, I, I never want the virtual to replace the on-site experience. So in time, I mean, if we can stare at our computers until we turn gray, but quite frankly, I, the true experience is going to the museums eventually, um, going to the parks. Um, but I, I do have to say, Scott, you know, there may be people who are limited by their mobility or by mm -hmm. transportation who have never been able to access our facilities and now for the first time may be getting, you know, more access than they were before. So, you know, I'm proud about um, that too, you know, as I look at virtual online type programming, you know, we might be reaching some people for the first time. I yeah. would agree. There's yeah. silver linings, you know, that are yes. coming out of this. That's for sure. Yes. Well, so Ginger, um, I'd ask Ginger, is she the only one who's, you know, quite frankly, you know, unhappy about this? Or is she figuring at this point, geez, it's been nice and quiet. And, I, I think um, yeah. she's probably been fine with it. Ginger has two buddies, uh, Quasi and Jack, who live with her. Um, both boyfriends, I guess. They're... <laughs> They all get along really well. They care about each other. They they sit together frequently, so they seem happy. Um, but you know, I haven't interacted with Ginger in a long time, and I'm really happy that she's uh, still accepting me as a friend today. Well, um, we've gone over time. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I want to thank you all again, Savannah, Ginger, Scott, Julia. Uh, for being on today, taking a, um, some time out of your day to join us. Thanks, everybody, uh, for tuning in for your comments, and your questions. Um, appreciate that. Um, we'll do this all again next week. We're going to do Fantastic Friends Part 2, where we'll have more members from the Champaign County Museums Network on to talk about what they're doing and in their institutions. Um, do any of you all on here have any parting words for anybody watching out there? Please uh, find the Anita Purvis Nature Center on Facebook if you haven't already as we start to roll out some new program options. That's where you'll see it. Um, if you don't use Facebook, then you're going to want to look at the uh, Urbana Park District website, urbanaparks.org. Thanks, man. Stay safe, folks. And always remember the museums, please. <laughs> and I would just say thanks and we miss you. So um, our, our information is at um, kam.illinois.edu or on any of our, of our social media channels at KM Illinois. Mm -hmm. And for SUSA, it would be susaarchives.org, all one word. Very nice. Well, thanks again. You know, as they all mentioned, find us all on social media, our websites. There's so much more out there. We miss you all. We will be reopened soon enough. But until next time, uh, thanks again. See everybody. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.